you know, things have to work together in harmony for the car to run smoothly. And when you think about the church body or the body of Christ or a church like this, and you know we're getting ready to host the revival, uh, we have to work in unity in order for things to run smoothly. We have to function at a high level of success, discipline, determination, and ultimately dedication for things to go smooth. Uh, we have to work in perfect harmony. In order to do that, uh, we have to understand that, hey, we're only as strong as our weakest link. That is why the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. So we want to always be sharpening each other and be our brother's keeper. That includes being our sister's keeper as well. Uh, it also means to be joined or united as a whole. Remember that, to be joined or united as a whole, because that's what we are in the body of Christ. Now, we can put that scripture on Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to be reading out of the King James here. Uh, I believe they've got the NIV up there. So I'm going to kind of, is it King James? Well, praise God, I ain't doing it. No, no. Just close that up then. Uh, he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Now, I like this because this is the Apostle Paul talking here. And he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord urge you that you walk worthy of the vocation or the calling wherewith you are called. So he's already encouraging us that, hey, uh, we have to be a doer of the word. And everything that we do should be done to glorify the Father. It doesn't matter if we're cleaning the toilet, if we're entering the puke buckets. And I say that because during deliverance, the most exciting thing for me was one of the things I hated the most in the beginning. That's cleaning out the puke buckets. Um, and I get a lot of kick for that. You know, why do we have puke buckets? Well, uh, when demons are coming out of somebody and they start to vomit, I'd rather have a bucket than to be paying for a carpet cleaner. I'm just saying, amen, so it's better to have something. And ultimately, uh, generally when a spirit leaves the body, there's going to be some sort of evidence of something coming out of the body. Your ears that may pop, you may pass gas, but something's going to come out. So for those of you that think you can just you know, the, the false teachings, the word of faith. Oh, you're he delivered in Jesus' name. And they go home and the symptoms are still there. It's because there was no deliverance. And this Friday, we're going to be talking about how when Jesus cast the demons out, sometimes they would come out with shrieks and screams and even foaming at the mouth. Now, if you ever see anybody going through deliverance in here or ever listen online, sometimes you hear shrieks and screams. Sometimes you see people vomiting. Sometimes, but what you don't see is a flock on the floor like a fish. Why? Because we're shut it down. If we're shut it down, we'll tell the person to start coughing because the flock on the floor is just a manifestation. That doesn't mean the person's getting delivered. We want to see complete evidence of something leaving the body. Amen? So the Bible is telling us that we're to walk worthy of our calling. All of us have been called into something. All of us have a purpose. All of us have a destination. And it's a journey to fulfill our purpose and calling in Christ Jesus. If we can flip to the next one, he says here, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Do you see that? So he's making an effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That means that sometimes your brother or sister may do something to you unintentionally, that kind of rubs you the wrong way. Or we want to take an offense, or we want to look past their faults and provide for their needs and understand that, hey, sometimes we're all going through a cleansing process. And that's why we're here at Brothers and Sisters Keepers. Iron sharpens iron. We can't work in harmony or in unity if we're walking around taking offenses with everybody. And you will be surprised at how easy it is to take an offense from your pastor or your brother or sister in Christ, but you won't take an offense from the person at the gas station that cussed you out or your doctor who told you you're sick and dying. But the very ones that are trying to help you or hold you accountable, it's easy to take an offense at. Why? Because a lot of the times when we're faced with the reality that we have to face ourselves, it becomes uncomfortable. And the enemy will use that to steal, kill, and bring destruction to the harmony within the body of Christ. This is why you have 60, I don't know, Baptists have over 60 different denominations of Baptists. I mean, my gosh, I've only got one Bible here. How do you get 60 different denominations? You've got, I mean, some Baptists don't believe in 
the signs, miracles, and wonders. Some don't believe in healing. Some believe in all of it. Some, I mean, it's, it's absurd. And the Bible tells us here, right here in verse 4, that there's one body and one spirit, even as you are called, one hope of your calling. And then look at verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Do you understand that there's no big I's and little U's here? There's no I in team. It is, it's, it's team, team Jesus. We're working together for one purpose, to seek and save the lost and to move in the dunamis power, the supernatural, divine, miraculous power that God has bestowed upon us through the indwelling spirit of Christ. Remember, everything is in Christ Jesus and from Christ Jesus through Christ Jesus. It's nothing that we're doing of ourselves. Somebody comes up, they get healed. That's all Jesus. It's all the Father. It's all him. He gets all the glory. There's one body. Why are we walking around living in division with one another? Why do, why do we see so many churches? I mean, let's look at deliverance, for example. So many churches reject it. So many churches reject healing. They'll stand up and preach a hardcore message of repentance and even word of faith, but they'll still send you to the doctor. But the Bible says that God bore our sicknesses and diseases at the cross of Calvary. He says, by his stripes we're healed. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. That's what the Bible says. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm looking to trust in the creator of man and not the creation of man. Modern medicine is the creation of man. Now, hey, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor if you got a cold, but I'm saying don't go to the doctor if you got a cold. How's that coming out? Hey, I'm just clearing my own street. So don't not go to the doctor and say, well, Brother Josh, Pastor Sash said don't go to the doctor. If you want to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. But as for me and my household, we, we want to seek King Jesus to heal and the author and finish of our faith. And if the Bible says that he conquered this at the cross of Calvary and then endued us, filled us with the supernatural power of God in Christ Jesus, the very one that raised him from the dead dwells within us. We should have life flowing through us in such a manner that when any sickness, any virus even touches our body, it should die. That's the same. That's the type of spirit that you have within you. Do you understand that? That's the type of life that should be flowing through our bodies. But a lot of the times because we've been molded or trained in the ways of the world instead of the ways of the Bible, there's kind of like a buffering between us and the Holy Spirit. Now we're filled with the Spirit. We're filled with the Lord. But when it comes to standing on that supernatural faith, that divine power that God has bestowed upon us, we have doubt or unbelief. But it's almost silly when you think about it. I could share the gospel with the stranger at the store and he prays. The prayer of salvation, you go home, you call everybody. You ain't going to believe it, man. He got saved. You know without a shadow of a doubt that man got saved. Just as you know if you're going to get in your car, the car's going to start when you turn the key. Hopefully you know that. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I've been there. I remember one time I dog in my car. I got Home Depot. I went to turn the key and went to start. I said, Lord, I repent. I appreciate this car. Man, I'm still driving that car. I'm serious, man. I was dogging it. I was unappreciative for the gift that God had given me. I was ungrateful. And I was complaining and murmuring and bickering about, bickering about. And man, when that car didn't start, I realized just how important that car was. But you see, God has already given you to car keys. You understand you've got a battery that's guaranteed to work that don't need recharge because it's running at full capacity all the time. The problem is, is that we get tired, we get lazy, we want to do it on our time. Do you understand this, man? The, the Bible tells us that we have the ability to cast out devils to heal the sick. So we should be doing these things. Let's keep going here. Let's go to the next scripture, Romans 12, verse 4 through 5. And this is why when we're doing these things, we're walking worthy of our calling. Remember, 
it's almost silly for us to doubt that God will heal. Well, I know God will heal, but do you really understand that he wants to do it? He's eager to do it. He's waiting to do it. All he needs is somebody to step out in faith and say, be healed in Jesus' name. That's it. Why do we? But when it comes to that, or even deliverance, we question, am I going to be able to get this demon out? Am I going to be able to, is God going to heal this knee? Is God going to heal this vertigo? Is God going to heal this kidney? Is God going to heal this liver? Is this cancer going to die? Well, my goodness, this cancer's already been put to death in the name of Jesus. Body be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, die. I curse it to death right now. Why? What am I saying this for? It's silly for us to have that much confidence in a prayer of salvation, but reject the rest of the gospel of Jesus Christ or have any inclination of a doubt, whether it comes to your own deliverance or someone else's healing. Period. It's silly. You will pray with a stranger and know they're saved. But you'll question if they got healed or if God's going to heal them. You'll question if they'll get deliverance because maybe you don't have all the information about them. Hey, listen, investigate if you got time. But Jesus, man, he cast the devils out. He healed the sick. Man, by the multitudes, he didn't have time. To investigate every single person. He'd been there for, he'd still be here. It said that he did so many miracles that the books and all the earth could not contain these things. Could you imagine if he stopped and asked everyone, hey, so uh, can you tell me about your childhood? I mean, I get it. You understand? Hey, it's good to get down to the root. Uh, and yeah, he had this, he was working on. In perfect unity with the Father because they were one in the same. But are we not, should we not be one in the same with the Father, walking in perfect unity and harmony? Because the Bible says, be a follower of God as his dear child. Everything that we should do should glorify the Father, whether it's cleaning the toilets, cleaning the puke buckets, sitting at a Le Mans class with your wife. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You should glorify the Father with your every action. Are you at work? Are you on a job site cussing like a sailor? The Bible says let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That's not glorifying the Father. What, what, what are you doing? Everything we should do, understand that we have a calling. And it doesn't matter. Your calling is to be a witness to the uttermost parts of the ends of the earth of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. That is what we've been called and entrusted to do. You don't believe me? Matthew tells us this. We'll get into that. Let's go to Romans 12, verses 4 and 5. For as we have many members, many members, many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Let's go. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. And every one members of another. In other words, hey, I might be an armpit. And you might be a toe. Do you understand what I'm saying? But my God, are we not the hands and feet of Jesus? Are we not to work together for one purpose? You know, if you cut off a couple toes, the body becomes the equilibrium. Gets, gets Now, it'll adjust. And it'll function. But my gosh, if this thing was working at full capacity, the churches, my gosh. The churches, man, the hospitals are so big. Man, the Cleveland Clinic no, is Cleveland. It's like it's got its own bus system. What, what, what does that mean? The doctors are in unity. The pharmaceutical companies are working in unity and harmony. For what? To get money. And uh, yeah, they help some people. But their goal is to get money. They work in together. All the way to the colleges. But you ain't hearing this in seminary. If the churches work together in unity. On one accord. Working and functioning as a whole. Just as Christ Jesus did himself when he was on earth. Man we'd be bigger than the Cleveland Clinic. We'd be operating like the body of Christ throughout the whole world. People would come from all over. They would be coming. Kings and queens and pastors and 
Every person, mentally ill, sick, it doesn't matter. If somebody's mentally ill, they take him to see a psych. Man, that's good. Okay, good. Get them on some medication. Get them stable so they don't hurt themselves. But my gosh, how about just taking them to King Jesus? How about just, just having the per the, just praying a prayer of salvation? It says the prayers of a face, the prayers of the face shall save the sick. What, what is that? Is that the scripture? The prayer of the face shall save. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. My gosh, are we not righteous in Christ Jesus? Is he not our righteousness? Is he not? Let's keep going here. Did I see verse 5 there? So we being men have it. Okay. No, let's go ahead. Keep going. Having then gifts differing according to the grace, the unconditional love and favor that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Prophecy is good. It's a real gift. Now, if one day you just wake up and put profit bill on your business card and start making business cards, there's probably a high probability that you're not a prophet. And most of the time, that's rooted in rejection. But the Bible tells us that in the last days, uh, young men will dream dreams. People will have visions. People will prophesy. Uh, women will prophesy. So if you have a problem with a woman pastor, you have to understand that if they've been given the authority to prophesy, how can we have a problem with them evangelizing? Is it not the same spirit, the same purpose working together for one body to seek and save the lost? Now, again, yes, there should be a covering. There's an order of things. God, the man, the wife, the children. So let's not get out of order. This is why we see homes in disarray. You have dad that bail on the family. Mom's running the house. The house ends up in rebellion with kids. Why? Because things were out of order. Mom stepped up and did the best she can. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, by the way. But mom stepped up and did the best that she could. She was forced in a position, and she did what she had to do to raise her children. But the house was out of order. And because of that, rebellion takes root within the children. Always. It always does. The Bible tells us rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Let us keep going there. Let's pull that back up. Listen, though. So let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, faith is a firm assurance, a belief in something. A prophecy, a true prophecy, is going to be used for the edifying and the building up of the body of Christ. It's not going to be some vague stuff that makes you feel good. Every time there was a prophecy in the Bible, it was given as a warning, an accurate warning. Hey, you don't do this. This is going to be bad. My gosh, look at Nebuchadnezzar. They, they told him, hey, man, you, you, you got to repent or you're going to be out in the wilderness. And he literally, for many, many years, I mean, he was like a dog, man, or a bear or something, man. Seriously, he said his hair grew long. He was out, man, long nails. I mean, he was dirty. I mean, but there's been lies. But my point is, again, it was used for the edifying and building up of the body of Christ. And if it was, and again, it was either a warning or given for something accurate. Somebody gives you a word, a prophet, say, hey, I'm a prophet, let me give you a word. Oh, okay. They share a word, I'll shelf it. I'll shelf it. Put it on the shelf. I'm not going to just look at them and, oh, I received that in the name of Jesus. It might make, their word might make me feel real good. My gosh. But you know what? The demons operating in and around somebody will also give you a word to build you up. Because pride cometh before the fall and a hearty spirit before destruction. So you have to be careful what you receive. Okay? The enemy will build you up just before he pulls the rug out from underneath you. Okay, so be careful in the words that you receive. Be careful in them. Let's look at uh, Romans 12, 16. Verse 12 and 16. Was that right there? What? Oh. Don't have it. That's all right. I got it right here. What? Here you go. This is it right here? Yep. I think this is it. Right here. Be of the same. So this is, this is what he's telling us. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, prideful things, but can condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits, in your own eyes. How many of us have been wise in our own eyes? 
I had, man, I always, man, if God told me where I was going 10 years ago, I would have screwed this up. If he told me where I'm going to be tomorrow, I'll mess it up. I'm just saying because I start trying to plan. I start trying to orchestrate. You understand? But God is talking about here in this Bible that we got to be of the same mind toward one another. We have to be our brother's keeper. We have to work in harmony. We have to be like-minded of brothers and sisters. And what is that mind? We're to have the mind of Christ. We're to walk in love and meekness and humility. You understand? Now, that doesn't mean that we're... I'm not even going there. Let's go back to unity. We have to understand that unity builds the body of believers. You should write that down if you're writing something down. Unity builds the body of believers. This is why it's so important. We have to be at a place where we're all on the same team, with the same mindset, seeing the same vision. That's why churches have problems. Because somebody somewhere in the congregation don't have the same vision of the pastor. They don't see the same thing and they start slowly working discord, which is not of God and it's through a spirit within the churches. And that's why the enemy works and slowly comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. Unity shows Christ to the world. My gosh, if you look at Hollywood, Man, sinners work in unity. I smuggled drugs across the country. And man, I worked in unity. I worked in, I was in harmony. With the, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I, I, I could get a pack from Cal Texas, from Mexico to California, from California to Cincinnati, from Cincinnati to Claremont County, from Claremont County to Brown County. And then I could get the money all the way back. Do you understand? Because it worked in harmony. I worked in unity. Now, if the kingdom of darkness also works in harmony and unity, and they cannot create nothing new, but they mimic everything that they see, how much more powerful is the kingdom of God if we would just come together with the same mindset in all the things that we do? We would be unstoppable because the Bible tells us greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I'm going to close up here in a few minutes with this. Remember, when we think of a unity, think of a team. Think of an army. A team will perform the duty or responsibility. They have a desired result or plan. What is that plan? To win. To win. We are already winners. But we walk around like losers. Man, we got to pull up our big boy britches. I'm just being honest. And we got to walk around like victors, like conquerors, like winners. Should walk in a room, the atmosphere should change. Everybody should take notice. Because you're so clothed in righteousness, the glory of God is radiating through you. Oh, man, what's this brother? Hey, man, God wants to heal you, brother. Oh, you're struggling with something, brother? Let me help you out. It doesn't matter. I'm not telling you to clothe yourself in righteousness and go to the bar and think you'll save the bar. On the contrary, the word alcohol derives from spirits. What is that in the Aramaic word derived from? Alkule, which means man-eating spirit. And you wonder why alcoholics have liver problems. Man-eating spirit. I don't really like to say this much, but Google it. You might learn it there. Matthew 10, 1 tells us that God gave the disciples authority to cast out devils, to heal all manner of disease. Do you understand? He, he sent them out in groups to work together in unity and harmony. Matthew 28, the Great Commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what he's telling you to do. To go out in harmony because one, if one is alone and he falls in a ditch, nobody is there to help him. But if two is there and one gets cold, he can give him a coat. He can help him out if he falls. But if they walk with Christ together in unity, they're a threefold cord. They cannot quickly be broken. Do you understand there's power in numbers in all that we do? 
We have to understand they would think of this as an army. An army works in unity. They're trained. They're disciplined. They're obedient. They're prepared to be deployed into battle. They're prepared to be deployed for battle at any given time. And the mindset of an army, of a person in the military, is kill. 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 What, what, that should be the mindset as a Christian. Destroy the kingdom of darkness. Totally annihilate Amen. Heal the sick. Cast out the demons. Share the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Seek and save the lost. Do you understand? It should be all about taking that ice pick and shoving it in the enemy's eye. After all, are we not soldiers? Have we not been enlisted in this army? Are we not in a battle fighting this good fight of faith? Laying hold to eternal life, pressing towards the mark of our higher calling in Christ Jesus. This means that we have to be in unity and one with one another, but also in one with the Spirit. If you open the door and allow sin to creep in your lives, it breaks the unity. Quickly repent, confess it. When I say quickly repent, learn from it, don't do it again. Walk in unity with the Spirit. Grow in God's grace and knowledge. Philippians 3, 14. Press towards the mark of your higher calling. Press means to go against opposition. What are you going against? The temptations and cares of the world. Romans 8, 31 through 39 tells us that we're more than a conquerors. We are overcomers. Do you hear that? That means you're not sick. Sickness should not reign in this mortal body, for this mortal body is clothed in immortality. My gosh. If we could just get that same mindset and work in that perfect harmony with the word of God. It goes forth, it heals, it delivers. It totally annihilates the kingdom of darkness. The Bible tells us that we are not powerless, Acts 1-8, that we've been endowed and clothed in power. The moment we are baptized with the Spirit, we've seen that last week. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you authority to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let me close with these, these three things. Let us be disciplined. Dedicated yeah. and determined. You get it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't. Yes. Yeah. So we'll yeah. do yeah. I think that's a show on this one. Ain't that a food yeah. show? Triple D yeah. Diner? Yeah, that's good. That's good. They got some good places. But we should be, I'm going to say it again, disciplined, dedicated, and determined. To give you a quick example of it, Joshua was determined. So this is basically he was showing you what the and he was dedicated when he marched around so the walls of Jericho the and when he entered into the promised the land. Esther, in the house. Mm -hmm. she so was determined and she was dedicated and, and even came and risked her so life to the point of death because of what, who and what she was praying for. Paul, the apostle Paul, was determined, dedicated, and disciplined. Man, he was the greatest, the Pharisee of the Pharisees. But the moment he converted and started doing something, his closest friends became his quickest enemies. We better learn from that as a church that walks in unity and harmony. The very ones that we love the most may be there to turn on us the quickest. But if I can share one thing, it's not them doing it. Your warfare is not the person. It's the spirits behind them. If you can always remember that, you'll see them through the eyes of Christ. You'll hang on that cross just as Christ did, and you'll say, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they did. Stephen, being stoned, was determined to be a witness unto the world, to live in unity through the Spirit of God when he said, Father, lay not this charge against them. Total forgiveness. And of course, the apostles, all of them, were determined. How do we know this? <laughs> because they all died horrible deaths. So remember this when you pray that prayer and you say, Lord, I want that apostle. I want to be like the apostle Paul. I want to be like Esther. Oh, I want that Esther faith. 
now. Are, are you sure? You know, are, are you sure? My biggest problems is when people pray and they'll say, oh, I want that, that spirit of Joshua in me. Talking about Joshua in the Bible. Well, I don't want the spirit of Joshua. I want the spirit of the Holy Ghost. I want the spirit of Christ dwelling within me. Because that's the same spirit that they operated through and gave them the ability to do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened them. Do you understand? Don't pray and ask for their spirits. Don't do that, man. Pray and ask for God to increase you. How does he increase you? Man, by going through trials and tribulations. By examining yourself. By being disciplined, dedicated, and determined. Amen. Amen. We're going to close out with prayer. If you can't stay for, stay for prayer, that's okay. We'll see you next Sunday at 6 p.m., but I will be here Friday night. Service starts at 7. Don't be late. Be here about 6.30. That way we can talk. We can chat. There'll be people coming from all over. It'll be good. It'll be great. Uh, oh, uh, I'm glad you said that. Let me say this, too. This is the third Friday of the month. So we meet here at 6 for prayer. So again, same thing. Service starts at 7, but we ask the men to come at 6. Or really anybody, if you want to come and pray. It's, it's a prayer service. We're praying for our church. Uh, we're praying in unity and harmony. We're praying for God to send people the sick, the oppressed, far and wide. And we're praying for God to send us, I don't, I don't want to say members, because I, I'm not some running some, what do they call that, some team, what, what's that jacket, members only jacket? I'm not, I'm not doing that. Man. What we're doing here is we want to just have people come that wants to be a part of something holy, something operating in the love of God, something moving in the power of the kingdom of God. Amen. And if that's what you're looking for, this is the place to be because every week miracles happen. Amen. Thanks for coming. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless every hearer of this word. We thank you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that if there be anything within us that brings us to a place of disobedience, Lord, I, we ask humbly that you reveal it. And Lord,